currently on a two hour training ride. Keeping my heart rate right around 145. Not pushing it too much. At least 70, 80% of my training is gonna be slower heart rate, 145 to 157. Anything above that, I'm uh, burning matches, as I like to call it. If you've ever read uh, Iron War, if you haven't, highly recommend it, but that's uh, what they use in it, and that's kind of just what stuck with me. This is episode one of Iron Man prep. Super excited, I feel great, my knee has been excellent, I have not had any knee pain. My current stats are as follows. I weigh just under 150 pounds, sitting at 148. My threshold heart rate, which will remain the same for the entire training, is 157. Uh, that is figured out by 180 minus your uh, age. That is kind of a rough estimate. Obviously, I do not have the access to getting more scientific about the data, but for right now, 157 is the max. For how fast I can go while keeping myself under that heart rate, as of right now, uh, I did my six miles yesterday at an average of a 915 pace to keep my heart rate just barely under 157. On the bike, I have done about 45 miles at just over a 15 mile an hour pace. Uh, I will be keeping track of all this throughout the training just to see where I'm progressing, where I'm falling behind. But yeah, as of right now, I'm keeping about a 15 mile an hour pace, which is not the best that I've done. Uh, I have done Tour de Frederick this previous year, keeping about a 17 mile an hour pace throughout the entire time, keeping my heart rate under my threshold. Uh, I completed the race in just under six hours, which is my personal best. I will be doing that race again this year. I also will be doing a half marathon, the Frederick Half, in May, so in a month and a half or so, two months. Yeah, closer to two months. I'm excited for that. Uh, I will be doing a decent amount of running until then, and then once that happens, I will drop off on the running a little bit and focus much, much more on cycling, just because that's where I'm gonna spend most of my day when I do this Ironman. And lastly, for the swimming, my fastest mile has been right at a two minute per 100 yard pace, which ended up being about 33 minutes. Uh, my fastest two mile swim, which yes, I have already done a fair amount of swimming in the last few months, just because I knew going into this that swimming was gonna be my weakest sport in this event. I've spent the entire winter really just focusing on swimming and learning how to swim or relearning how to swim because uh, when I did my half Ironman with my brother, the swimming was atrocious. It was awful. I think I did a half Ironman swim, which is, what, 1.2 miles in an hour and a half? <laughs> I did two miles recently in an hour and 10 minutes. So, a little bit of improvement there already. And hopefully that only gets faster. But the major thing about this whole thing is my knee pain. My knee's been great. I am planning on taking it very nice and easy on the running. Even though I'm training for this half, I'm not training hard for it. This is more of a fun, I just love doing this race. It's so much fun. The community around it is awesome. So just gonna do it and have fun and uh, run 13 miles and then cut the running back or dial it back a lot and focus more on cycling. And in case you are wondering, I have done a fair amount of endurance not necessarily races, but endurance work in the past. Like I said, I have done one half Ironman, which I didn't really train all that much for. Uh, I did it in about eight and a half hours with my brother. That was more of just a on the fly, hey, let's train for this, think it'll be fun. And I also dealt with knee pain back then. So that didn't really help. The cycling was about the only thing that I was really prepared for in that. I did, managed to complete the stone mill 50 miler back in November 
even though my knee was hurting throughout the entire thing. So it took me just over 13 hours. Actually kind of finished past the cutoff, but they still let me cross the finish line and I got my stone mill coffee mug. So I'm happy with it. It was a fun day. I would totally do it again and I plan on doing it again. But I realized that I really need to focus on fixing my knees, my legs, working a little more on the strength training kind of side of things and uh, ever since implementing things like sled pulls and knees over toes in my lunges and certain other exercises, my knee has been phenomenal. I'm super happy with it. I'm also not going to push it. Not quite yet. Also, before I go any farther, I wanted to give you guys a little update on the whole drone situation. Thank you again so much for donating for the drone. Uh, I have received the money that Jew Wizard or Tom had raised for the drone and I finally have received the money from YouTube from what you guys donated through the uh, super thanks on YouTube. So thank you again so much. I will be ordering the drone very soon. Don't worry, I didn't just take the money and run. <laughs> I appreciate you all and it's gonna go towards a newer, nicer drone. So thank you. Also, I'm not just excited for getting a new drone just to have it, but it's really going to help out with taking footage of this training. So when I get to open water swims, some longer bike rides, I will be able to get some cool drone footage. So I'm just, I'm really excited to see how this all goes. All right, so my training plan is not something that I'm trying to teach. This is my first ever Ironman. I'm kind of just... My schedule is going to be changing a lot. Right now, I'm literally just following the program that is on Iron Man's website. Uh, but I can already tell that some things are going to change. Uh, my fitness level is well above uh, what it is asking for the cycling to start off with. So I'm going to be starting off a little bit higher on that. But I'm going to be doing less running to start. And the swimming is kind of... It's pretty difficult for me to spend an hour constantly swimming in a pool right now, but that is what it's asking me to do twice a week. So, like I said, I fit it to myself. Nothing that you see on here is how I'm saying that you should do it. Everyone's at their own fitness level, and I've kind of come to realize that what they have on their website is really just a general rule of thumb. Like, if this is your first Iron Man, this is a pretty good idea to try and do this. And if you do this and you do everything properly, you'll be able to finish. So, like I said, don't uh, take anything that you see throughout all of my training and be like, I have to do it exactly like that. I'm going to make mistakes. I've probably already made mistakes. But, you know, I learn things the hard way and I, I learn things by just doing them. So, I'm going to take you guys along for the journey of training for my first full Ironman. For your information, I am doing Ironman Maryland, so yay, jellyfish. <laughs> and yeah, for my ride today, I got, again, you know how I said I was gonna make mistakes. A lot of you guys are gonna see this and be like, yeah, you shouldn't be eating that while you ride, but it tastes good, and I'm not super concerned about it for today because I'm only on the bike for about two hours. I have English muffins and Nutella. I'm gonna try to do this without them falling off got a banana, I had my BCAAs right before starting, and I got some Gatorade in my bottle. Lately I've been using a lot more uh, liquid IV, uh, but to save money, temporarily, I am using Gatorade. So yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. I'll, uh, I'll catch you guys on my, my short little run after this bike ride. I only need to go out for about 10 minutes. Just gonna do a one mile, 10 minute mile, just to slowly get myself used to my legs being filled with lactic acid and just feeling like I got lead strapped to my feet. No matter how much preparation you do, you're still gonna feel like that. The goal here is just to make it so it doesn't surprise me quite as much. 
I don't usually take my phone on these short runs with me, so just see you when I get back. All right, 1.25 miles down. Gonna not reach my hand up into the ceiling fan. Totally has not happened before. <laughs> All right, time to hit some stretching, eat some food, and call it a day. That is it for the video today guys thank you so much for tuning in and yeah i'm really looking forward to this uh it's been a while since i've had something to really create content around because i've just been so focused on getting myself and my body prepared to be able to train uh for me i wasn't able to just jump right into even what i'm doing right now for training uh which by the way i don't think i actually said um Essentially, everything right now is just an hour of training every day, except for Saturdays, I do longer rides between two and three hours. Uh, but yeah, to start, I'm doing Mondays are one hour swimming, Tuesdays are 45 minutes to an hour of running, Wednesdays are an hour of cycling, Thursdays are back to another hour of swimming, Fridays are supposed to be another 45 minute run, but I'm actually right now making that my off day. And then uh, Saturdays, I'm doing a two to three hour ride. And Sundays, uh, because I have weekends off, those are when I'm gonna have my two longer workouts. Uh, Sundays, I'm supposed to have my rest day, but I'm moving my Friday run to Sunday. I'm also making it longer because I'm training for this half marathon. So like this coming week, I have to do seven miles. The next week I'll do eight and that should get me on track for doing this half marathon in May. So, yeah, I will keep you guys up to date on everything, uh, and I'm gonna just share whatever I experiment with and what I learned. So, peace.